Hello, my name is James Vanderlaan. I'm the manager here at Kent County Conservation League. And I'm Mark Jacobson. I'm the chief fire instructor and chairman of the board at the Kent County Conservation League here in Ada, Michigan. We're going to talk about firearm safety today. Four cardinal rules that we work with all times handling firearms in any given situation, as well as today that we're talking about your safety during your sporting event here at the Conservation Club. Number one, always treat every gun as though it's loaded, always. And we'll go over the various states of safe, but we treat every gun, no matter if the action's open or not, as though it's loaded. Two, never point these firearms in an unsafe direction. Any direction where you're not certain of where the shot will go is an unsafe direction. Walls are false senses of security. Never point the gun anywhere that it's not authorized to be pointed. Number three, never put your finger on the trigger until you're on target ready to shoot. That means in the box, you're loaded, it's safe, remove the safety. As you call for the target, you can go ahead and put your finger on the trigger. Number four, always know your target, your backstop, and beyond. We have a wonderful facility here, but deer did not get the memo along with other wild life game out here that they could come into the target area. We want you to be aware of that. We don't want any wounded animals or any, for that matter, anybody else that might be in the target area. Thank you for watching. I hope your experience here at the Conservation Club is a profitable one. Thanks for coming. Hello again. My name is James Vanderlaan. I'm the manager here at Kent County Conservation League. And I'm Mark Jacobson. I'm the Chief Fire Instructor here at the Kent County Conservation League. Here we're going to start going over some of the equipment you're going to be utilizing on the range. For starters, at all times when on the range, you must be wearing ear and eye protection once on the field. Safety glasses are provided here at the club. If you do have other eyewear, you can use that, including sunglasses and prescription, and prescription as well. well. Also, too, we have hearing protection that's mandatory anytime that you're in and about the uh, different ranges or the sporting clients courses. James, what do you think? Most people would prefer the plugs in the shotgun sports. Uh, you want to find something that you're comfortable with. The plugs, obviously, there's no obstruction when you're holding the shotgun up, uh, but definitely when you're on the rifle or pistol range, most are more preferred because they do block out more sound. And by obstruction, that would probably be something like this, where I try to get down in here and it's hitting the side and I can't really get a good sight right. picture of the shotgun. Right. Okay. Moving forward from the ear and eye protection, we're going to start talking about the shotgun shells that you'll be using out there. Uh, there are multiple different gauges available here uh, to go along with the gun that you have. You want to be aware of what shotgun uh, gauge that your gun is that you have. Um, here in front of us here I have four different types, a 12 gauge shell, a 20 gauge shell, a 28 gauge shell, and a 410. What does that tell me? The gauge of the shell? The gauge of the shell. So what else is there to this? Inside of this shell here, there is a projectile at the end here. Uh, the size of the shot, as you'll see in the box, uh, that number is what identifies the size of that projectile in each shell. So why is that important? Um, that number is very important here as those numbers go from double lot all the way up to number nines. If I'm using number four shot, I'm not going to have as many individual projectiles and it's going to be harder to hit that target that's moving fast and I'm going to endanger people possibly in a, what we call the shot drop area. That is correct. The okay. lower the number on the shot size, the larger the projectile coming out of the, the uh, And the more inertia and the greater it travels. So correct. seven and a half is what we use on... Sporting clays, five stand, and trap. Uh, so if I come in here with my number six shot hunting mode, I'm not getting an advantage. I'm actually at a disadvantage and I endanger somebody by doing that. That is correct. Okay. So that is why here at the Kent County Conservation League, we restrict the size shot that you're allowed to use at our shotgun sports. We allow seven and a halfs, eights, and nines. Nothing larger than seven and a half, so no fives, sixes, or double lot. And double lot would be like those individual, maybe nine or 10, 12 pellets in a 12 gauge? Correct. And they go a long way. They go a long way, that is correct. Okay, good to know. What else do we got that we should know about the 20s and the 12s? They seem to be the most common. Yes. Although we do have a lot of people that shoot 28s and 410s. That is correct. What's bad if I have both of those in my pocket so at the same time? One of the biggest things here is when you get your equipment, which is why it's very important to be uh, aware of what type of gun you're using is because you do not want to mix up your shotgun shells together. Um, the 12 gauge shell and the 20 gauge shell can be mixed up as they're fairly similar. There's a reason why they're different colored there as well. Different brands have different colors, but typically a 20 gauge shell is going to be yellow. That signifies it's a 20 gauge shell. You do not want to drop this in a 12 gauge shell as it will slide right down into the barrel, making you unaware that it is there. Following so, it up with another shell could be disastrous here as the 12 gauge shell would fit behind it and created an extremely big problem for everybody involved. So if I drop that 20 gauge in there, what happens? 
Wow. Okay. Can you see into the see how that disappeared? Our shooter not paying attention who may have just had a 120 gauge round in their pocket, dropping that in. They may not have realized which barrel they put it in and reach back in their pocket, grab a 12 gauge round, drop it back in, which seats properly. And then now I'm not going to do it because it would be extremely dangerous, but I'm, I wouldn't close this to demonstrate that you could fire this yes. in this condition. If you were to close that and fire that, there's a blockage in the barrel, which is going to create an explosion. Of the and I've heard that called the 1220 magazine. Yes. You've heard that before? Yes, the 12 goes correct. off just before the 20 blows up? Yes. Yeah. That's Boy, a dangerous that's... situation. We're just not the shooter, but all bystanders in the round. That doesn't drop too easy, does it? Yeah, we got a rod then. And that's where we had the clearing rods on. Yep. Yeah. So if you ever did have a problem like this, uh, at all the fields we have volunteers and pullers. Uh, there is a cleaning rod at every station. Right. If you ever had a bad shell that maybe the wad didn't clear or sounded funny, we ask you to grab the rod, the puller will grab the rod, and what we can do is we can run it down the barrel of the gun, which will get rid of that blockage, whether it be a 20 gauge shell like that, or even just a wad that maybe have the bad factory load or a reload that didn't go off correctly. Well, that's good to know. That's something for everybody to look at, how that just disappears right into that barrel, and you can drop that 12 gauge in there, and you wouldn't know it until you pulled the trigger and it was a catastrophe. So the next time that you're mixing up those, those different shells in your pocket, Think about why sometimes the veteran shooters of the club out here might have a word or two with you if they see it. It really could prevent a catastrophe. Let me go clear this. Okay. And uh, we'll come back to the back. We'll get back to it. Here's the uh, clearing rod that we can use to clear barrel obstructions. In this case here, we were talking about the 12, 20, or the 20 gauge barrel obstruction in a 12 gauge chamber. So James has the clearing rod here, which everybody, we have those at all the various shooting stations. And as we showed you before, we have the 20 gauge shell is deeply lodged in there. And this is an inert 12 gauge round. And as you can see, we can put that in there and close it and we could fire it if that was a live one and cause a catastrophe. So now James is gonna show you the proper way to clear that out of there. Taking this rod. Pick the barrel, whatever barrel that you have the blockage in. Drop it down. That just pops right out. That pops right out. And then you are clear to go. And it is always smart again, looking down the correct down the barrel if you have an over-under to make sure that you are clear. So this is safe to look this way, but what if I happen to have one of the semi-autos in the pumps? We're never gonna look down the barrel of any gun. How do I check to make sure it's safe? You run, by simply running the rod down the barrel. Okay. You can see here in the action and then nothing has come through there, it signifies that your barrel is clean. That's great to know. And I can do that with the semi-auto too, no problem. Same concept here. The action's open in the semi-auto. see the rod come through, letting us know that the barrel is clear of all obstructions. And if I was going to inspect any further, that would require disassembly, then i make sure it's safe. Okay, cool. Kind of like the revolver and the semi-automatic pistol. The revolver, we can open the cylinder and safely look down the barrel, where the pistol has to be disassembled to safely look down the barrel. Absolutely. Gotcha. Okay, now when we get into different types of shotguns you might see here on the range or might utilize out in the range. I have three different types here. Up top here, we have one called a pump shotgun. Uh, a pump shotgun, as you can see here, uh, at all times on any gun, we always want to make sure that we can see the action is open. We're never going to walk around with a closed action at any time, at any place on the range. Um, this signifies everybody can see, Mark can tell right now from here that the action's open and that the gun is unloaded. Uh, we're never going to load the gun until we're on the station, any gun until we're on the station. Uh, the gun is pointed downrange in a safe direction and it is your turn to shoot. Um, when we do so with the pump shotgun, we would drop the shell in here. Okay, so what do I, if this gun was loaded, what would I be looking for? Kind of how that guy's sitting in there, similar like that? Yep. You so can see the shell there? You see the shell in there? Or what if it's in the chamber? It's fine if it was in the chamber like that too, uh, once we're ready to go. So we are show that. That's interesting. I like to see that. So that, that there, the action's open, but yet we could still have one that fell into the chamber. So that is a good thing to look for, yeah. okay? So with the pump, when we were ready to shoot, we would drop that shell in there and simply rack this forearm forward. Once that forearm is forward, the gun is ready to be fired, which is why we want to make sure we're never doing that until we are in the station, that we are able to shoot, and the gun is always pointed downrange in a safe direction. For loading a second shell for the pump, we simply turn it over, take the shell, and push it to the bottom until it clicks, 
Well, how about if my gun holds like four or five? We're never, it doesn't matter if your gun can hold four, two, four, six, or eight shells. We're never going to load any more than two shells at a time here at Kent County Conservation League. Well, why is that? I need four or five shots to hit one. You're never going to have to fire any more than two shots at a time. So all I get is one shot at a time. One shot at a time. Uh, oh, come on. On the trap field, we actually limit you to just one shell at a time as well. So for skeet, five stand, and sporting clays, you're allowed to load two shells at a time. So no matter if I'm out here and I'm being handicapped, the rules are no more than two no shells at a time. No more than two time. shells at a time. It doesn't matter if you're shooting a special game out here, be it the flurry or anything else, no more than two shells at a time. All right, well that's so, good to know. Uh, to unload a pump, let's say I, I stepped into the station, for example, and it wasn't actually my turn to shoot. Before I leave the station, I'm just not going to turn around and unload my gun behind everybody. I'm still in the station with the gun pointed down range. Typically there's a release here. I push that button, rack it back and it's going to let eject that shell. I'll pull it forward again, we'll eject the other one there. And that's particular to the Mossberg. That's particular to the Mossberg. Uh, there, depending on the brand gun you have, it could be different on how, where there's a release there and whatnot. Um, if you were to fire that gun, it was your turn. Uh, to rack the next shell in, you'd have to do the same thing where you'd pull it, pull it back. So I'll hold this kind of, wait a second here, we'll load this back up. It was our turn to shoot. And we pulled the trigger at the first one, You'd have to rack it back, which would eject, bring the second one in, and it's supposed to bring that up into the chamber there, uh, but it seems to be dropping up the bottom there, uh, and then we'd fire the gun again. With the pump, even though it's been discharged twice, typically that second round would still be in the chamber here. Before we leave the station, we want to make sure that we open it back up, look down to make sure that there are no rounds that has ejected both shells, then you are safe to leave the station with the gun still pointing in the safe direction. Okay. Well, that's interesting to know. It will Look at that one a little bit later, maybe. That's again gets into this proper operation and knowing your equipment. So when he loaded that in there, and that's good to know that if I load the second shell in there in this manner here, and the safety is now off, if I engage, boom, and I shoot, eject, and now it did chamber. So with that shotgun there, it has a built-in safety, unlike the Remington, to where now the second shell and it's going to fire. Exactly. So that was something that, that uh, for this gun here, if you if this was yours, you would know the equipment and what it uh, consists of. Very good. That's something about a Mossberg. I didn't know. Moving on to our next type of gun here. Here we have a Winchester XX4. It's a semi-automatic shotgun. You can see here, again, the action's open. Mark can tell me right now, just by looking at it, that there's no ground in there. And I can look into the chamber, like the pump chamber. Yep. Um, again, so when it is our turn, uh, and it's your turn to step in the station and shoot, uh, to load this, we simply drop one shell in there with the brass to the back. It wants, it's pointed in the safe direction again at all times. Typically on a semi-auto, there's a button either on the side here or down below. Making sure your hand is clear of the action, you press that button, and it's going to chamber the shell. Turning it over, sim similar to the way the pump was, but typically you're going to have a little lever here you have to fight. Push that in and all the way until it clicks, and you're loaded up with two shells. And again, this gun can hold probably six, but we're only going to load two at a time. So, with a semi-automatic, as you pull the trigger, what will happen is it'll actually eject the first shell and load the second one automatically. So the next time you pull the trigger, it'll do it again. The nice part about a semi-automatic is typically when you expend the last shell, the action stays open. So you're saying, for those of us that aren't familiar with semi-automatics, that the semi-automatic is allowing the, the operation of the action without any other concern than pulling the trigger. That is correct. So what happens if that gun fails to do that? What do I need to do? Well, no matter what, what kind of failure you have, if you pull the trigger, it doesn't go off whether it's semi-automatic or any other kind of gun. We don't want to panic. We want to make sure that the gun is pointed downrange still. We don't turn around looking for help. Uh, the gun's pointed downrange, and then we're going to look and kind of diagnose the problem from there. So if I have what would be called a hang fire, meaning I pull the trigger, the gun went clear, it's probably good to keep it pointed in a safe direction for maybe 10 to 20 seconds. Absolutely. Seconds. That's why, again, we're always keeping the gun pointed in a safe direction no matter, you know, whether it's loaded or not. And um, so the way you ejected that, too, made a lot of sense because if that shell is a hang fire and I eject it, let it hit the ground, I maybe want to get it away from me because in case it does explode at some point, that is correct. it's going to be safely off into the field. Yep, yep, that is correct. So if you had something like that, you would hear it click. Uh, if you don't hear a click at all, maybe your safety is on, there's a couple different things it could be, but when you hear the click and the gun does not go boom, you do want to keep it pointed downrange, wait a couple seconds, and then you can rack it to get rid of that shell 
uh, after a couple seconds that it's set. That's good to know. So, That'll prevent a lot of injury. Again, even with the semi-auto, you do want to make sure before you leave the station, you glance down, make sure that everything is cleared, that both shells you loaded are out, and you're free to turn, keeping the gun pointed in a safe direction, and let the next person come up and shoot. Over and under. So, as you can see, these guns sitting in the rack right now. The actions are all open in the semi-auto, in the pump here. The over-under is closed right now. So up on our front porch here, we do have a gun rack where the guns can sit upright. Uh, when they're sitting upright, the over-unders in the pumps are going to have the action open at all times. Obviously, you cannot do that with an over-under. But when you pick the over-under up from the rack, pick your gun up, first thing you do want to do is make sure you crack it open. Typically, there's just a little lever here you slide over, it breaks right open. That way, again, mark. And I like what you did. You showed uh, the gun in a safe direction, finger off the Absolutely. trigger. Excellent. Yep, so again, that way you can see when you do so, everybody can tell that the gun is unloaded. So again, if it was loaded with these inert shells as a demonstrator, we'd be looking for something like Yes, this is what you'd see if it was loaded and you picked it up, which we don't want to see that. Immediately we want to unload the gun. So we get back to the first rule, is that we treat every gun as low as loaded always. Yeah. No exceptions to the rule. Absolutely. Good. So now we take our gun out, our, our over-under here, out in the range. Uh, we're shooting skeet or trap, whatever. Um, it's our turn to shoot. Once our turn is the only time again that we're allowed to load the gun, we step into the red station with an over-under. Obviously you can only load two shells at a time, so you can't go away loading any more than that. If you are shooting trap, you would just load the one. Uh, with an over-under, there's a little bit more to have to, you have to be familiar with uh, with your gun here, as there's a couple more settings in just the safety. With two barrels and one trigger, there's something called a barrel selector. It's located typically on this, the thumb safety here, and there will be a U and an O. Oh. Oh. Um, over and one for yep, under. over and under. Uh, that will signify which barrel is going to fire first. Uh, knowing that will be important because if you're shooting trap, you're only going to be allowed to load one shell. If you put it in the wrong barrel and you pull the trigger, it's just going to go click. Uh, so you do want to know, be aware of what kind of equipment you're using, be aware of the gun, uh, get familiar with it before you head out to the range. Um, so when it is time to shoot, let's say we're shooting skeet, we're going to be able to load two shells. We drop once we're in the station, again the gun's pointed downrange in the safe direction. We drop two shells in the chamber, load it up. You look down, make sure again your safety would be typically is right on the thumb here, that it's off, and then the gun's right loaded and ready to be fired. Once we get done firing, you simply pull the rack or the lever back. And when these so these are inert shells, uh, yeah, so so they're, let's they're show them. Let's pull the trigger on those. It won't so, hurt a thing. Those are snap caps too. Safety off. And that's a, an inertia trigger, so it's just kind of unique. Now, James, if he bumps that, that's, the gun that wouldn't discharge twice. So this is kind of a side note for the Browning. If he hits the buttstock on the ground gently, now that just reset. Now when he pulls the trigger, he just uh, caused it to go. So that doesn't mean anything is wrong with your gun, because a lot of people, what they'll do is if they put it in the wrong um, barrel, they'll pull the trigger, get the click, and then they're pulling the trigger again, nothing's happening. That's because these rental guns that we have, these Browning Satori's, have inertia triggers in them that have to have the action reopen or there has to be recoil from the discharge of that round to cause it. So you don't have a gun problem, you just have a operating problem. And that's why we're doing this video, is to help make it more safe and clarify some of the uh, particularities with the guns that we have for rent. Okay. Now that we've uh, fired both rounds to take the shells out, we simply are going to move this lever here over our shoulder as they will be ejected out. You do not want to be looking down the bar end of the barrel there when you do that. You glance down, both shells are ejected as you can all see here. The barrel is empty here. We are now safe with the barrel cracked to leave the station for the next year to come up. Well, hopefully this uh, instruction here was helpful to you and it will enhance your experience here at the Kent County Conservation League. These two shotguns here are typically ones that we have here for rent at the Conservation Club. At this moment we don't have pumps, but we wanted to include this in this safety video because there's a lot of people that shoot this, both recreationally and for hunting. So we wanted to make sure that this was uh, something that we covered in this video. James, thanks for the insight on these things. Thanks for your experience in dealing with the uh, shotgun sports here all these years. It's always an enlightening thing to me. Usually mine is uh, tactical and my shotguns hold a lot more rounds than uh, two. That's why I thought I was doing so well. I was shooting four or five rounds each uh, sporting play out there, and I was getting uh, 50, but I shot 150 to get it. So, All right, well, that's good to know, good to hear. I guess I'm uh, not as good of a clay shooter as I thought I was because I shoot too many times. Thanks for the insight. All right, 
hopefully uh, your experience at the Conservation Club and uh, will be a memorable one. Thanks for watching. Thank you. Hi, my name is James Vanderlaan. I'm the manager here at Kent County Conservation League. Here we are at station one of our sporting clays course. We're going to go over a tutorial on how to utilize our current claymate system. As you can see here with the range rules, we want to make sure before we get started that the size shot that we have for our shotgun matches what's allowed here. Seven and a half, eights and nines are all allowed. Nothing larger than seven and a half, no sixes or double up. We want to make sure as well that everybody in the party has ear and eye protection on at all times. We're going to walk over here to our golf cart and grab our gun, which we are going to make sure as well that the action is open. We're going to keep it pointed in a safe direction at all times as we approach the station. At every station there is a gun rack. Again, we want to make sure the actions are open and all the guns they can set there. Now we can familiarize ourselves with the station here. At every station there is an A target and a B target. To our left in the station, there is a menu specific for every station. Here on station one, we're shooting two true pairs. The menu is designed based on the course design to match what you're supposed to shoot there. While the menu is here for the course that it's set, feel free to shoot the course however you'd like. If you pay for 50 targets, you can shoot 50 targets at any station or any way you'd like through the course. There are two different types of pairs that we'll be shooting here on the Sporting Clays course. It's called a true and a report. A true pair is where both birds are launched simultaneously. So when you call pull, the A target and the B target downrange are launched at the same time. A report pair is where when you call pull, the A target will be launched first, and once you shoot, the B target is launched. So over here to the claymate system, once you arrive at the sporting clays course, you should have been provided with something like this. It's called the counter. The counter allows you to throw targets here and keeps track of how many targets you throw at every station. If you don't have the counter or you don't plug it in, it's going to simply beep at you and not allow you to throw any targets. So once you have everybody in the station, you're familiar with where the A target and B target is, you're going to take your counter, plug it in on the side of the claymate, press the instant button if you're shooting with multiple people. This will allow you now to throw targets instantly at the push of the button on our controller here. The controller has three buttons, an A, a B, and a pair. The A and B will throw the individual targets. The pair button will throw both targets simultaneously. Once everybody is in the station and paying attention, you're allowed two show targets per station. You want to make sure everybody's in the station and watching so we're not wasting targets later on because somebody wasn't paying attention when we showed them the first time. So we can look down range here. Everybody's paying attention so we'll see what the A target looks like. And the B. Now we know what the targets look like, we're ready to shoot. But let's say we're by ourselves out here shooting, we don't have anybody to pull for us. Our claymate can take care of that for us. By using the time delay button, the second button on the claymate here, when we throw our pairs now, we can ready ourselves, and we're ready to shoot. We press the A button, the claymate will beat four times. On the fourth beat, release the target. That works for singles and true pairs. To throw a report pair by yourself, you need to use the following pair button on the claymate. Ready yourself, press the pair button on the controller, and as you can see there it launched the A target first, and then under the delay launched the B target, making it replicate a report pair. Once we're ready to go here, we want to pick our gun up. We want to make sure that we're never loading the gun until it is pointed through this big window here, downrange in a safe direction. I have my trusty puller here, so I no longer need to use the delay function. So we're simply going to push it on instant. And I'll be in the shooting box for this. Again, we want to make sure that everybody in the group party is wearing ear and eye protection before we load up and begin. Everybody has it, so we're good to go. Are you, your ears are in. Now on the sporting clay stores, even though we might shoot two pairs here, I'm only going to allow it to load two shells at a time. So as we load the gun, it's pointed down range, safe direction. 
Mark's got the button, he's ready to go. I've seen the targets. So when I'm ready now, he's going to throw a true pair for me. Nice. That's the way it's done. And now before I leave and move the barrel, I want to make sure that the action is open on the gun and the shells have been expended and I can safely keep my gun pointed in safe directions, hit it back in the rack. Now I typically would shoot one more pair, but then let the next person shoot. Once everybody's done so, we want to make sure that we move our counter and we go on to the next station. If you forget your counter, you're going to have to come back for it. It's required for every station. When you complete the clays course, you simply bring this back to the clubhouse, to the front desk, turn it in, and pay for the targets that you've thrown. Yeah, I see it indicates seven, so that's how many targets we threw. That's how many targets we threw here. Okay. Thank you for watching our video today. I hope to see you out on our sporting clays course soon.